Good morning, everybody. It's Eric from SK. If I look a little bundled up, it's because it is freezing outside. It's the middle of January. This is Sycamore, Illinois. That's about 60 miles west of Chicago. Outside temperature is five degrees Fahrenheit and the wind is gonna start kicking up pretty soon. But it is a beautiful, beautiful winter day here. And I'm about to go over to SK Hand Tools to check out their restoration project. They're rehabbing a 1930s era extruder, which is a tool that helps them make screwdriver blades. So come and check it out with me. Here we go. SK Hand Tools, folks. I'm gonna take you inside in a minute, but first, I am going to bundle the heck up. This is the main plant at SK Hand Tools. I'm going to go find Mark Stanley who keeps this place humming. If he can't fix it or fabricate it, it can't be fixed or fat. So let's, uh, let's go talk with Mark. All right, so. I'm here with Mark Stanley. He is rebuilding this thing. It's a 1930s era extruder. What's it called? A Waterbury? Waterbury extruder. Waterbury extruder. Basically, model, model 33. This thing is part of the blade manufacturing process. And we got this from a vendor of ours. You can't buy these in any store at any price. So, Mark, tell me what we have here. How does this thing work? We actually, at this point, Eric, we have a shelled machine that we totally disassembled. So one, we could understand the process of how it worked and how it was assembled back in the day. Uh, we're going through having the crank uh, reground, all new bearings and everything put in it. Yep. And revamp the machine for what the purposes are that we're looking to, uh, yep. to uh, run the machine And folks, for. that's where the crank is. That's a regular human sized hand. That's how big that crank is. How does that crank spin in there without eating itself up? Uh, four, four inch bronze bushings that are probably 18 inches in diameter. Four inches wide, probably uh, three and a half inches thick and, and 18 inches in diameter. And what kind of lubrication does it use? Uh, we're gonna put a, uh, a computerized oiling system on it. Okay, so look at this real carefully, folks. This thing, 1930s era, we're not sure how much it weighs disassembled, but assembled, it's gonna be, how many? 17, 18,000 pounds. 17, 18,000 pounds. So, okay, Mark, the action is, this crank spins right here, and then what happens with these two cams right here? The cams actuate, which actually lifts a two position die in the ram. So one hit it would do the, the top die, yep. the second hit it would come around and do the bottom die lift to make the position to make the uh, hex on our screwdriver blades. Sure, sure. Okay, so you basically have a crankshaft like a engine block crankshaft. Yep. You got a ram going in this way. The connecting rod. And the con ram, rod. And then a two position ram that runs up and down off of that eccentric down in the middle. Yeah, and it looks like you've already fitted some of your cooling uh, lines, some of your oil lines. Some of the oil lines on it. And you some of the stuff we've done, we've already went through the locking mechanism for the oh, ram. Oh man, look at that. What, what, what am I looking at here? How does the lock, this work? Here's, here's the locking mechanism. It okay. runs off the shaft. Oh my goodness. So it actually goes and locks look at the that. way it's supposed to now. Okay. And does this sit in an oil bath too for lubrication? Or no, this will have an oil dripper. A dripper? An actual oil dripper that comes okay. out into a pan and then we'll recoup the oil. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, you got to show me this flywheel. <laughs> now that's a flywheel. Can I get that bearing at Home Depot? No. You won't find those bearings anymore. Really? You can't get them? You'd have to have it made. Made in USA, baby. That is cool. So, it's not a multi-rib, it's multi-belt. Multi so one, belt. two, three, four, was it four belts? Five belts. Five belts go in here. Four, five, five yep. belts. Wow, that is so cool. 
How long is it going to take you to get this thing together? We're looking for the third quarter of this year to have it up and running. Wow. Wow. Well, I can't wait to see it. Thanks for showing it to us. No problem. Thank you. Mark has a few more tricks up his sleeve, including a robotic feed arm, so stay tuned. And thanks for watching.